The Jar 5 Dominator is the first weapon I ever set my sights on unlocking in Helldivers 2. Situated on page 3 of the Steeled Veterans Premium Warbond, it seemed like an attainable early game weapon to help me take the fight to the automatons. The Jar 5 would begin the first in a long line of bitter disappointments with weapon unlocks in my Helldiving experience, and today we'll explain why that is. The Dominator is the only gun presently listed in the explosive subcategory of primary weapons. Though that's a bit misleading, as both the Liberator Explosive and Scorcher also do explosive damage. Helldivers is a little bit inconsistent with its nomenclature, as many have noticed regarding how some light armor penetrating weapons actually penetrate medium armor, and some explosive weapons seem a lot less explosive than others. So take the menu descriptions with a large grain of salt. Or better yet, watch on, because the reason we make these videos is to sort out what's what from what's not. As usual, we'll be testing the Dominator across a wide array of both Terminated and Automaton units to answer the ever-present question. Should you bother stowing your beloved Breaker shotgun to try this thing? The last third of this video deals with the Automatons, who have completely different loadout needs than the Terminates. You'll likely be spending more of the endgame fighting the bots, so make sure to hang around and see how the gun performs against them too. Firing jet-propelled rounds, the Jar 5 Dominator traits fire rate and magazine capacity for increased damage per projectile. It is medium armor penetrating, has a damage of 200, a mag capacity of 15, recoil of 75, and fire rate of 250. It allows you to carry a maximum of 8 magazines. The gun's reload menu reveals the ability to switch between the default of semi-automatic mode, shooting once per trigger press, to burst mode, shooting a grouping of 3 shots per trigger hold. It also allows you to switch the flashlight to on, off, and automatic. With our demo so rudely interrupted, we get to right away find out that the Dominator one-shots all lightly armored terminated units, which even extends to the rank and file warriors if you shoot for the head. You'll notice that the gun is extremely heavy and suffers from severe aiming lag. This makes it extremely difficult to use muscle memory when aiming and forces you to be very deliberate with your shooting. As someone used to 90s tournament shooters and snap reflex tactical FPS, this gun is unbelievably cumbersome and tedious to aim. It's like taking the baseline level of joy the game gives you and then dividing it by two. Every engagement is less fun when your gun feels like it weighs a ton. To compensate for this, you'll be happy to know that the Jar 5 can take out a Sports Bure at over half a kilometer if you only unload your entire mag at it. Nothing in the chamber. The ballistics in this game are really something else. How about that bullet drop over distance? Back to the Terminids, the Dominator can behead the mighty Brood Commanders with only two shots, putting it on par with the Slugger. Hive Guards go down in four shots directly to the armor plating, and closer to two if you can hit their exposed flesh. Nursing Spewers go down with two shots to the head, just avoid the Bile Sack. You'll be wasting ammo for no reason. Taking down charges with the mode du jour leg armor deplating method takes anywhere between 2 to 5 shots, depending on how messed up the charger is going into the encounter. For Bile Titans, as always, stow your primary and stick to heavy weapons and airstrikes to take them down. It doesn't matter how explosive your primary is, it's always going to be a chore when taking these guys on. Using the gun for utility purposes, such as clearing egg clusters, is painful, as it's very slow to aim and doesn't benefit from the explosive AoE advantage of the Scorcher. So each round is only taking out one egg at a time. This makes the process extremely ammo inefficient and take forever. All in all, this gun is rather unpleasant to use against the Terminates. It's extremely easy to get overwhelmed even by a swarm of light units, because you simply can't aim and shoot fast enough to keep them off you. The gun feels like you're trying to rotate 30 kilo dumbbells as part of some weird core activation exercise. What that does make me wonder is how this gun will perform in light of all the new energy and explosive based weapons we have coming in the new Warbond later this week. Including of course that tasty looking plasma shotgun. Make sure you're subscribed to get notified when we do our Warbond review shortly. You can't shake the feeling that everything this gun does against bugs is done better by another. The Breaker Shotgun handles 90% of Terminated encounters more quickly with extra finesse, while the Slugger offers similar penetration with more damage and accuracy. Not to mention increased utility, since it can open closed shipping containers and take down fencing. I fail to see the advantage of the explosive aspect of the gun. 
so much of its performance is compromised for this one quality and it appears to have very little to show for it. If you want a general purpose terminate horde clearer, stick with the breaker. And if you want a way better version of the dominator, just use the slugger instead. So things didn't quite go great with the terminates, but the experience of fighting the automatons is completely different. And that's largely what the dominator was created for. So let's see how it does over on the other side of the galaxy. Dropping in with the Dominator for the first time was a surreal experience. I came in under fire from groups of Striders immediately. Lucky me, I thought, because this gun is explosive like the Scorcher, I'll just be able to shoot the front plating and two-tap each Strider. Well, here you can see how well that strategy worked out for me. I'm unsure what the explosive quality of this gun is meant to denote, but in practice it's something completely different to the Scorcher. This gun was borderline useless against the Striders. All shots bounced off the plating, and because it's so slow and sluggish to aim, trying to hit the leg joints was like playing pin the tail on the donkey six tequila shots deep after someone battered you over the head. I was actually laughing aloud at how horrible this gun was and how this was the single worst low level drop I'd ever done in my 250 hours of playing the game. As you'd expect, it cleared the foot soldier units in a single shot, which is the least you would expect from something this cumbersome. However, the aiming lag and the slow speed of the projectile made hitting them a bit more of a mission than it should have been. For the Devastators, much as I expected by this point, it was basically just a worse slugger. Like the slugger, it can stagger them, which is great, and basically mandatory to survive in any capacity, but I saw no added advantage from it being an explosive weapon. It's not like the head hitbox suddenly became larger and allowed me to take out chunks of their face without aiming with utter precision. It was just like using the slugger except with way more aim lag. Here you can see how it performs when shooting the exposed vents of a turret. Max empty. Lesson, don't use this gun to shoot the exposed vents of a turret. People compare the Dominator to the Bolter from Warhammer 40k, but honestly, I don't think a genetically engineered, roided up superhuman would approve of a gun that's basically Betahood incarnate. The Dominator seems like it wasn't developed to fill any specific role. Its AoE is virtually non-existent, hence rendering the explosive element moot. It struggles penetrating armor like that of a Strider. It's painfully slow to aim and doesn't set itself apart from a gun like the Slugger, which seems superior in just about every measurable way. It literally made me enjoy Helldivers 2 less. That is, in fact, the single most impressive thing about this gun. The closest thing I can liken it to is a jagged, dry turd, because much like the turd, the most relieving part about it is finally getting it out of your life. With that, I hope you appreciate my sacrifice, made so that you don't have to make one of your own. Save your time and save your medals, because the only thing the Jar 5 dominates is the toilet bowl. The developers have said that they want the primaries to feel like crap so that you use your stratagems more. And in this case, all I can say is, mission thoroughly accomplished. Great job. Have you used it? Make sure to tell me about all the ways I suck, am ignorant, using the gun wrong, and of course, impart on us your unique, tightly kept family secret way of using it to solo hell dives without ever relying on a stratagem. If there is a purpose for this gun beyond creating memes, I'm here for it. See you next time.